All right, this video will help you with the different problem types that appear on your Unit 7 test review. The first question we're going to take a look at here is 3D, and in 3D we're just asked to find uh, which values to exclude so that we don't get zero in the denominator. One way to do this is just guess and check, randomly plug in numbers in for x until you figure out when this whole bottom expression would equal zero. The easier way to do that is just to factor this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and factor this. It's a trinomial. So I'll factor it into two binomials, and we'll have x and x. Last term's positive. That means signs need to be the same. Plus, plus, minus, minus. Well, negative in the middle tells me i got to go minus, minus. And so I'm thinking 3 and 4 because that would multiply to give me positive 12 and a negative 3 and a negative 4 added together would give me that negative 7 in the middle. Now that i got a factor, it's easy to figure out which, which values we want to avoid. So we don't want to have x equals 3 because if I put x equals 3 in there, I get 0 in the denominator. And I also don't want to have x equals 4. All right, let's take a look now at uh, question 5. In question 5, we're just asked to simplify this. So we're just going to factor this out. So 24, I'm thinking 4 times 6. So let's see. 24, we go 4 and 6 and 4. And 6 isn't prime, so that's 2 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. x to the 4th, there's 4 x's there. So I would write 1, 2, 3, 4. The denominator, I'm thinking 4 times 5. Well, there's 4. There's 5 is prime. And then 7 x's. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven. Okay, now I'm going to divide out the common factors. Common factor of 2, another common factor of 2, common factors of x, four of them. All right, let's see what's left. So it looks like in the numerator I just have a 2. In the denominator I have 2, and then I have 3 of those x's, so that'll be, sorry, I have a 5 and 3 x's, so that would be 5 x to the third. Now let's double check those x's. The x's are actually a lot easier than just writing them all out. Writing them all out helps you understand what's going on. But look, I have 4 in the top, 7 in the bottom. That tells me when I get done dividing them out, I'm going to have 3 left in the bottom. So that's a little quicker way to get to that answer. All right, let's take a look now at question 7. Question 7, I'm just asked to simplify this fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and factor both the top and the bottom. Top is a difference of squares. So x plus 4 x minus 4. Bottom, uh, let's see, I have x and x, looks like plus and plus. Multiply to give me 16, add to give me 8, that's 4 and 4. And so we have a common factor of x plus 4 that I would divide out. And so our final simplified answer there would be x minus 4 over x plus 4. Take a look at question 11 now. Question 11, I'm asked to multiply these. The easier way to do this though is move this up here a little bit. Easier way to do this though is to factor everything all out. So let's see. Draw a big fraction bar. I'll start factoring this out. 9, 3 times 3, uh, 3 y's, 1, 2, 3. 18, I'm thinking 2 times 9. There's 2. 9 isn't prime though, so that's 3 times 3. And then 4 x's. 1, 2, 3, 4. The denominator 24. I'm thinking 4 times 6. There's 4. There's 6, and then 7x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 27, uh, I'm thinking 3 times 9. There's 3, there's 9, 2 y's. 1, 2. All right, let's start dividing stuff out now. Uh, common factor of 3 and 3. Another common factor of 3 and 3. Um, let's see. Another pair of 3's. Let's get rid of those. A 2 and a 2 here. Okay, it looks like I've divided all the numbers out. Now let's go for the y's. So 3 in the top, 2 in the bottom. That's going to leave 1 in the top. X's, 4 in the top, 7 in the bottom. That's going to leave 3 in the bottom when I divide them out. 1, 2, 3. 4 divided out, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 3 in the bottom. Let's take a look and see what we have left. In the numerator, it looks like I just have a y. In the denominator, 2 times 2 is 4, and it looks like I have 3x's there, so 4x to the third. 
for my final simplified answer. Okay, question 13. I'm asked to do division. Well, I want to change this to multiplication first, which means I want to flip the second fraction. So I'm going to do that as I factor here. So the first fraction is going to stay like it is, but we'll factor it out. So 6 is 2 times 3 times x. When I factor that, uh, the denominator is going to factor into two trinomials, two binomials, sorry, x and x. I need a plus and a minus. Uh, so multiply to give me negative 6, add to give me negative 1, that's negative 3, positive 2. Change to multiplication. So this one's going to come up to the top. That'll factor into two binomials, x and x. Same signs, and they're both going to have to be negative, minus, minus, and 3 and 4. 24, x to the third. 24, I'm thinking 4 times 6. There's 4. There's 6. 3 x's. 1, 2, 3. All right, let's divide out the common factors before we start multiplying. It's like a common factor of x minus 3. Uh, common factor of 2. Common factor of 3. And one of these x's. Let's see, I think that's it. Okay. So then we'll multiply what's left over. In the numerator, I just have x minus 4. In the denominator, I have x plus 2 times uh, 4 times x squared. So a couple things left there. So I'll write that 4 first. So I'll 4, and then I'll take the x squared. Maybe we'll write these in parentheses. x squared, and then finally x plus 2 for my final simplified answer. Take a look at question 18 now. Question 18, um, I'm asked to subtract. Well, to subtract, I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to start to find my LCD. All right, so my LCD, I need to represent each of the factor types here. Here is one factor type, x plus 3. Here is my other factor type, x. So these are different factors. In order for these to be common factors, they would have to be the same in every way. This is x plus 3. That's just x. Those are not the same. So I want to represent each of these factor types in my LCD. So it would look like this, x times x plus 3 for my LCD. So this fraction here, if I compare it to the LCD, is just missing an x. So I want to multiply top and the bottom of this thing by x. So I go times x, times x. So that would give me x squared over x times x plus 3. My next fraction, I want to have, that, again, that same LCD, x times x plus 3. And let's take a look. This started with x. We're missing an x plus 3, so I need to multiply that top by x plus 3. So really what's going on there is I have x minus 3 times x plus 3. Okay? Let's simplify this by multiplying it together. This is uh, going to end up being a difference of squares. We've got x plus 3, x minus 3. That's going to multiply to give us x squared minus 9. Okay? So that is my answer there that I want to subtract. And notice I need to distribute this negative sign to both terms when I do this subtraction. So let's write our answer now. Denominator is going to stay the same. Now let's take a look. I have x squared minus x squared. That's going to give me 0. Then I have minus a negative 9. Well, minus a negative 9 is the same as plus a positive 9. So we write that as just a positive 9. We close that parentheses off there on the bottom. And that's our final simplified answer. OK, taking a look at question 24 here. We're asked to solve this equation. And notice we've got fractions in our equation, so we want to clear those fractions out of the equation. We do that by multiplying everything by the LCD. Before I can find the LCD, I need to factor this trinomial over here to see what kind of factors we have going on. So I'd say x and x. Last term's negative, so I know I've got to go plus minus. Um, let's see. Multiplies to give me 18 with a difference of 3. That's 6 and 3. And I'll put the 6 here and the 3 there. And then that multiplies to give me negative 18, adds to give me the negative 3 I want in the middle. Now let's look at our factor types. So it looks like I just have two factor types, an x minus 6 and an x plus 3. So that's going to be my LCD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply everything times that L LCD. So I'll take this whole equation and I'm going to multiply that by x minus 6 times x plus 3. Okay, now as I multiply, I'm going to divide out the common factors. So I'm going through and multiplying each of these terms by that LCD. Let's write this over 1. Okay, so when I multiply here, notice the x minus 6 is going to divide out. 
that's going to divide out with that factor of x minus 6. So all I'm going to have left there is 3 times x plus 3. Now I'm going to go to the next one. When I multiply this LCD times here, the x plus 3 is going to divide out. And so all I have left is that x minus 6 getting multiplied by that 2. So I'll have minus 2 times x minus 6. And that's going to equal, on this side, when I multiply by this LCD, notice everything's going to divide out. The x minus 6 will divide out, and the x plus 3 will divide out. So that's going to drop out entirely and leave me with just this negative 32. Okay, now I'm just going to solve this equation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this left side by distributing. So I'll distribute the 3. That will give me 3x plus 9. Then I'll distribute the negative 2. That would give me minus 2x plus 12, and that's going to equal negative 32. Let's look to combine some like terms now. I have some x terms here, 3x and negative 2x. That will give me just x. 9 plus 12 is going to give me positive 21. That equals negative 32. Subtract 21 from both sides, and we'll get x is equal to, let's see, 3 negative 53 for my final answer. Oh, sorry. Subtract 21 from each side and I get negative 53 for my final answer when I solve that equation. Let's take a look now at question 28. Again, I have an equation and I have a fraction in the equation, so I want to clear the fraction out of the equation. So I'm looking at the LCD. Well, the LCD is pretty simple here. The only denominator is x, so that's going to be my LCD. So I'm going to go through and multiply everything by that LCD of x over 1. Okay, so when I distribute it here, first term I really just have x times x, so that's going to give me x squared. Next one, that common factor of x is going to divide out before I ever even multiply. x divides out with that x, so all I'm left with there is just plus 7 equals, and then when I multiply it by my third term, x times negative 8 is just going to give me negative 8x. Okay. Notice I have an x squared term in this equation. The only way we can solve x squared terms at this point is to get everything on one side, factor it, and find the zeros. So that's what I want to do. I want to get this 8x over to this side and a 0 on the right side. So I would add 8x to both sides. Let's take a look at what we have then. We'll have x squared plus 8x plus 7 equals 0. Now I want to factor this to find the zeros. So I factor this, so x and x, uh, both positive, so it looks like uh, 7 and 1, that would multiply to give me 7 and add to give me 8. So now here are my solutions. This, is gonna, this, this equation will be true if I can get this thing to equal 0 or this thing to equal 0. Well, when this equals 0, that will happen when x is equal to negative 1. So there's one solution. And it will also occur when this expression equals 0, and that's going to happen when x equals negative 7. Now I want to check, sorry about that, now I want to check one last thing and make sure that these terms, these answers here, don't give me a denominator of 0 up here. If they would, then I have to exclude one of these answers. Uh, so taking a look up here, the only thing that would give us 0 in a denominator in this problem would be the actual number 0. So since neither of these solutions are zero, both of these solutions are good, and I would write them both as a solution. Had w I plugged one of these back in up here, and it had made a denominator zero, then I would want to exclude that as a possible solution.